Hello everyone, biomarkers and finger sticking for uric acid, glucose, ketones, and lactate, and we start right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Pete. I am a PhD biochemist. I specialize in the area of gout along with the reversal of diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular disease. I am a nutrition network health practitioner, and I have been coaching large numbers of clients for over the last five years. Today, what I'm going to do is literally take you through a demonstration on uh, how to do the biomarkers that I think are important. And in the beginning of my own diabetes reversal and gout remission, I was measuring these biomarkers every single day and at other times of the day, including before and after meals as examples. First thing is, Every single day, the first biomarkers that I measure are right away in the morning after I get out of bed. Blood pressure, weight, and then I measure my glucose, my ketones, my uric acid, and also my lactate. And I'll explain a little bit about the, the lactate issue uh, near the end of the presentation. Because I want to keep this short and to the point, I've already done my blood pressure and also my weight. I record my values using a log book, all right? And I like the log book, maybe it's my age, better than using one of the apps that are out there. And th mainly the reason is, is because I like the fact that I can make extensive notes in here. Like for example, here you can see, I've made ex extensive notes on, on uh, recent workouts that, that I have, completed along with the biomarkers that I have measured. So it makes it really easy for me to flip around in the pages over in quiet times and analyze what I'm seeing. And I literally have five years of N1 in these notebooks, five years of it. So let's look at the finger sticking now. So I utilize for my glucose and ketones, I utilize the keto moho meter. There are other meters on the market when I've done videos like this in the past, I've gotten some criticism because they're like, you're just doing an advertisement. Look, use whatever meter you want, all right? This is the one that I use and I get good results with it, so I stick with it. For uric acid, I use the Eurasure meter, all right? And this is meter number two. You'll notice in previous videos that, I, that I've done on finger sticking for uric acid, I was utilizing the original meter from them. And then for the lactate, I'm using the Nova uh, lactate plus meter, which is the industry standard. All three of these meters provide good, accurate results. I have found with the keto moho, if I measure my blood gl glucose and ketones before I go into a laboratory and have it done formally, that usually my keto moho is within a few mg per, per deciliter of the lab value. And with my Ura2 Sure meter, uh, I'm getting values before I go to the laboratory and have them measured there that are within one mg per deciliter. Pretty good. And the Nova lactate, like I said, for athletic compositions and things like that and experimentation is a highly accurate meter. All right. So now let's get to the demonstration. So usually in the morning, what I do is I'll just set up my three meters sitting on my notebook. Make sure to have a lancet out, right? Because you're going to be poking holes in your finger. And make sure to exchange the actual needle that's inside these things. They, they come in all different shapes and form. They're not complicated to sort out. Make sure you have some tissue. And I've already done a, a finger stick uh, to prepare for the video. Uh, so make sure to have the tissue out because once we generate a blood droplet, we're going to wipe it off. What I always do first, finger stick, get a blood bubble, and I'm going to do my blood glucose and my uric acid first. Wipe the finger off, and then I will make a new finger stick and get a blood droplet for the ketones and the lactate. The reason that I do that is that if I try to do it all off of one blood bubble, a lot of times I end up failing because the blood coagulates before you've got the time to get the ketones and the lactate. Remember that in the keto moho meter, that first you're going to do the glucose and then you have to switch strips. 
So there's a bit of finagling here. So instead of getting complicated with it, I do my glucose and my uric acid. Then I, I poke a different finger and I do my ketones and my lactate. And that way I get good solid data. So let's, let's rock and roll with this. When you go to do this, make sure that you've got clean, dry hands. I use liquid dishwashing soap to, to clean up and really scrub them down good. You got to have all of the stuff, all of the surface stuff off of there. If you are getting readings that are awry, right? They're they're out of the ballpark and it's like, okay, this is not correct. Normally it's because your fingers aren't clean enough. So you scrub them up until they literally are squeaking and then make sure they're good and dry. And we are going to do the glucose right now and we are going to uh, do the uric acid. So the first thing is I make sure that my lancet is cocked. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and prepare the strips in advance because again, you're up against a time frame here. So rip the packages over. I line my strips up. Each of the instruments or little machines have their own strips. All right. And the lactate strips come in a bottle. So I've already pulled one out organize this up. My ketone strip is with my lactate. Now I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pre-insert the strips. And each of the machines, after you've inserted the strip, has to boot, right? And on Keto Moho, you'll see that there's a little uh, blood drop that's going on on here. And similarly, on the UA Sure, there will be a, 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 a blinking little, you know, blood drop You can see a little bit of blood there, and I'm just going to squeeze it out. And I'm going to wipe it off at least twice. You don't want to dilly-dally around with this because basically if the blood clots, then you're not going to get the sample. All right, first I'm going to do my glucose. And it looks like I didn't get enough blood for uric acid, so I'm just going to re... Like I said, this is live. So I'm going to the other finger that my blood's at 81. And so I'm going to record that in my notebook. And my uric acid this morning is 4.9. That's a good value. I'm maintaining the blood drop on my finger because now what I'm going to do is eject the glucose strip. And I'll go ahead and get the ketones, but I'm going to do yet another finger stick for the lactate. Because I know my lactate strips are much more sensitive uh, to coagulation. And uh, while I'm waiting for the ketones to come up, I'll go ahead and prepare my lactate meter. My ketones this morning... 0.9 so i'm going to record that value all right and then i'm finger sticking for the lactate better get going here because i wouldn't be surprised if that meter is going to turn off in a minute okay now i'm going to go after the lactate that meter takes 13 seconds to count down Okay, here we go. And my lactate is at 1.4. It's actually pretty high. Now, lactate is interesting, and I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I didn't sleep very well last night. And I actually don't know why I didn't sleep very well. And one of the characteristics I see in the morning at fasting levels is when I don't sleep well, my lactate is always elevated. So this is a good question about, I, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to have to look at my athleticism over the past uh, several days. All right. And you'll notice that all of that went into my notebook and my blood pressure this morning was 129 over 79. And that wasn't right after I got up. In fact, that was right before I did this video. So I'm fairly animated right now. And usually my blood pressure is going to be about 10 units lower if I had done it right after getting up. But I knew I was doing this video today. So I held off doing the markers. And you'll notice my weight is at 137 and I'm weight stable. I've been doing this for five years now. 
And in the beginning, in the first year, I lost 33 pounds of weight. I, re I reversed my diabetes in 52 days. I brought my uh, A1C from 5.9 pre-diabetes down to 5.0 in 52 days. And then the gout remission followed later. Using the UA Sure Meter 2, I can have been able to track my uric acid since the beginning of this whole en endeavor. Now, to close out the video, when do we measure? All right. As a rule, when and these days I'm spot, I'm just taking spot checking. I don't do this every single day. But when I was actively reversing the diabetes, I was measuring everyday fasting. And that's more or less when I'm spot checking what I do now. Occasionally, I'll, I'll test in the late afternoon before I have my evening uh, meal. However, in the beginning, when you are doing this to start, then I recommend measuring uh, fasting values every single day and all of the ones that I talked about here, even including weight. The best markers that are available to the lay person, right, without having to go and deal with the expense of a laboratory and all that is the glucose, the ketones, and the uric acid that we can finger stick for. You will see those values stabilize as well over time. Now, you guys know, if you follow me, that when you start this lifestyle, you're going to see the uric acid rising, especially if you've really cut into the carbs. And I don't want to go off on a tangent about that right now, because that's not the purpose of this video. But once you're keto adapted, you will see the uric acid come back down. How do you track all that? Well, here you go. That's how you do it, right? You can know yourself. You're not dependent on going in every six months to the doctor and getting a single value, which in and of itself is not that valuable to you because uric acid, just like your weight and blood pressure and everything else can fluctuate. And it's going to be dependent in a lot of respects, not only how you slept, but the meal that you had the night before and whether or not you're holding to the lifestyle. If you were drinking alcohol the night before, your uric acid the next day is going to be elevated. And I know this from years and years and years at this point of doing the N1. Then one of the most important aspects of this for the glucose and the uric acid is you can measure those values before you eat and then post meal. Even if you want to, you can go at 30 minutes, do it early, but then one hour and two hours. And this allows you to monitor how your lifestyle is going based on what exactly you're putting in your mouth. For the gout sufferer, this means the, that you can test different proteins, right? Especially the carnivore guys. Test before a, a meal of ribeye steak. And then at one hour and two hour, you're testing the uric acid again, and you can see what the level of elevation is. There is a tremendous, tremendous amount of data you can get on yourself to help you do the gout remission, the reversal of diabetes, the reversal of obesity, and the reversal even of cardiovascular disease, utilizing the nutritional ketosis that I advocate for uh, in my videos. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to comment below on anything that you want to add to this or any questions that you have. You can find me at www.drpetescoutintensive.com and at www.drpnt.com. And my email address is peterdelanoy at drpnt.com.